What's up everyone? Today's video is about the MCAT. I know it's a long time coming. I'm sorry for being this late, but hey, Warriors won. So that's a plus, right? So let's just get straight into what is today's video going to be about. Well, today's video is, first of all, I'm going to tell you my MCAT experience and the score I got. I'm not trying to clickbait this video. I, I again, I'm just totally transparent with you guys. Just, I'll tell you my score, my experience. I really don't care that much uh, because this number does not define a person and that's something that you should always remember. Second thing I will tell you is I will tell you my MCAT science tips and then I will move on to MCAT verbal tips and some MCAT study materials. I will tell you the best ones that I thought and the worst ones that I thought. Um, because I used a lot of them when I was studying and the last one is I will tell you You know what makes the MCAT challenging and just some things to put that into perspective So my MCAT experience was that I took my MCAT after my second year So after my sophomore year in college, I actually um, Started studying in late May and I took it in early September Okay, so just just for your perspective um, the other thing is because I took the old MCAT, I only took a test that was around three and a half hours long compared to the one that you're taking now for most of you, who, which is seven hours long. So just take that with a grain of salt when I tell you these things. My score was a 37. Um, that was 14 on the physical sciences, 14 on the biological sciences, and nine on verbal. So just so you know, uh, my personal background. I also took the MCAT twice. I took it twice because the first time I took it, I kid you not, I was like 14 questions in and then I press next to go onto the next page and my test just completely goes crazy and takes me to the end of the test survey. And I was like, wait, what? And basically there were computer errors and I had to start rescheduling because my first test had all these computer errors. It was a crazy experience. Maybe I'll tell you all about it if you actually want to know, but that's, that's it. Second time I took it, it was actually like three weeks later after my original date, it was on my birthday. And uh, yeah, that was quite an experience. Um, the thing you should know about my MCAT experience is I genuinely love studying for it. I love everything about science. I love biology. I, I love chemistry. I love physics. I love OCHEM. So I learned so much, and this was a test I genuinely enjoyed study for, studying for. And that's going to be a big tip moving forward. Because a lot of students I work with have this stigma towards particular subjects, and that prevents them from genuinely like falling into com completely immersing themselves in it. And that kind of inhibits their studying. So before you even start studying for the MCAT, one tip I have straight off the bat is you really have to enjoy what you're doing and enjoy um, just what you're learning. What the? Well, how did that happen? I don't know how this window just became smaller, but anyway, um, let's move on to some MCAT science tips. So the MCAT, new MCAT includes physical sciences, behavioral sciences, and biological sciences. I told you I took the old MCAT. So that just included the physical sciences and the biological sciences. I don't know that much about behavioral sciences, so I can't, I can't help you too much with that. But so just take my advice in terms of physical and biological. What personally helped, helped me was, here's a really unknown tip. Taking general biology, like whatever undergrad institution you go to, take the general biology course the semester right before you start studying for the MCAT, especially if you're going to take the MCAT your second or third year. Because that really helps because bio biology, just general biology, is hands down the most imperative aspect of the MCAT. It's intertwined in every section. You need to know general biology. And for me, I took general biology in the semester right before I started studying for the MCAT. So the great part was I came off of my final for general biology. So I knew as much as I ever would know about general biology because I just took the final for it. And then I studied, started studying for the MCAT. I was like, damn, that was a huge implicit benefit. So I recommend that to anyone. Another thing is I would recommend to anyone who wants to implicitly start studying for the MCAT early to tutor in classes related to the MCAT. So in my first semester uh, at undergrad, I took general chemistry. After finishing general chemistry, I just happened to really enjoy the subject, so I became a general chemistry tutor. So come MCAT time, I had bio, I had biology under my belt because I had just taken the final for it, and I had gen chem under my belt because I had been tutoring it for two years. And um, the other thing is, there are these two sites that are MCAT question of the day. 
FBA sites. I'm going to link them in the description below. There's going to be a lot of resources for you in the description below. There's this one and this one. I get these still emailed to me to this very day, but I started doing these MCAT question of the days like freshman year of college. And again, it's not because I was nerding out and I was like, I have to be perfect on the MCAT. I have to beat everyone. I'm not a gunner. I promise you. I was actually doing these questions because again, I genuinely love science. I was, I was like trying to learn new things. I was like, what does equilibrium constant mean? So I'd see a question about the equilibrium constant and look it up. I was like looking up things about the kidney when I saw a question on the kidney. So I was doing this question, these questions once a day since freshman year. And even though they were just implicit one a day, one a day, one a day, they really added it up by the time I started studying for the MCAT. All right. And I will also link this below. I haven't linked it yet here, but I have a personal playlist on MCAT question of the day. So when I first started this channel, which was way back when my first idea for this channel was like, I'm going to make an MCAT question of the day. <laughs> and that didn't last for long, but I do have like 56 videos on random topic. And I usually add some periodically pun intended. Uh, every now and then. So if that helps you, go for it. Do a question a day, those really help. Let me now move on to a bit more science tips. Collaborate. Uh, you will learn a lot more from each other than you will reading a book. It's just the fact of life. That's why you go to lecture. That's why a professor talks at you instead of asking you to read a bunch of stuff and, and then not going to lecture at all. So. Um, one thing I found really helpful was when other people asked me difficult questions or, or they asked me a question and I had to learn from it because if I got it wrong, I learned from it. Similarly, I would ask others questions. This aspect of collaboration is intertwined in my identity. I love collaborating. I hate competition. I love collaboration. So initially, I, I do a lot of this stuff where I, I, I made a Facebook group. So I encourage you to join that Facebook group too. It's going to be linked below. But in that Facebook group, I, I wanted it so people can post their own hard MCAT questions and have other people answer it. And that way you create like this collaborative group where people are always sharing things. So I created this group and unfortunately, it has like 70 members right now, but I'm the only one who posts questions. So I feel kind of awkward. So if you want to join that group and start posting questions where everyone can kind of join in and learn from each other, that'd be awesome. People get a lot from that. So if you're interested, join that group. It's in the description below. All right. And the last piece of advice I would give you is to read papers. That's the best way to study for the MCAT. I know many of you, if you're studying in your second or third year, reading papers is a daunting task, but you're going to need to learn how to do it eventually, especially if you're going to med school. So try doing that early on in undergrad. More importantly, if you don't like reading like me, I hate reading. I listen to this nature slash science, science podcast. I'm a podcast guy. So every week you can look this up. You can look up nature and you can look up science. They both have podcasts. Every week they go over general findings and research. They talk about optogenetics, induce pluripotent stem cells. There's a lot of great stuff out there that will help you learn about science in ways that are not just related to the hardcore textbook way. Like you need to know how to apply it to research because that's where your passages on the MCAT are coming from. And these podcasts are great for that. Okay. I hate reading. I can't read. I like the last book I read was like the kite runner in 10th grade. It's like, why read something when I can like listen to a YouTube video? And that's like why I do so much stuff on YouTube. So the only objective way and so when I talked to my mentor about verbal, because I struggled with verbal a lot, which is the car section, the way I, 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 I asked my mentor, I was like, I hate reading. How do I get better at this? He gave me one objective method that I still remember to this day. And it's called this website called Spreeder.com. Spreeder.com will take anything that you find on the internet and you copy and paste it into Spreeder. And what it will do is it will um, pretty much flash that article in front of you at a certain words per minute rate. And the cool part is if you do this often enough, once per day for at least two months, you can increase your reading speed. And that is the one objective way I can think of, of improving your verbal score. Because personally, in when I took the verbal section, there were seven passages and it, I was just so bad at it that I would like never have time. I would never finish it. So I would like read six passages like well and then just guess my butt off on the seventh one. And so this Spreeder method really helps with that because it helps increase your reading speed. So if you're trying to improve your car slash verbal section, I would suggest you use this website and also read like one science slash NY Times article per day, copy and paste it into this website and have it flash in front of your eyes at a certain rate. First of all, that will get you more familiar with reading on a screen as opposed to reading on a piece of paper, which is entirely different from what I've been told. I wouldn't know because I have not done too much of either. This is really good because this can help you finish passages earlier and give you more time to work on the questions. Cars and verbal are the only uh, sections on the MCAT where 
every question is staring you right in the face. The answer to every question is staring you right in the face. There is no reason you should get any question wrong. And so for that reason, if you actually had enough time, you should be able to go back to the passage and figure out exactly where each answer is located. So just my two cents, the most objective way I can think of of improving your verbal score is to actually potentially increase your reading speed. And this is one way to do that. I didn't do this for a long enough time for it to impact me that much. So I encourage all of you to try it out. All right, last but not least, just some of my general general tips about the science materials and which ones I like the most. And you guys can take from this what you want. But for science content, I personally like Berkeley Review, the Berkeley Review, the best. That's not me being subjective just because I went to Berkeley. I personally thought, first of all, the questions are way harder than anything I would, I would see on the MCAT. So I really appreciated that because it over-prepared me. And so I really like the Berkeley Review set for the science content. That's physics, gen chem, o -chem, bio. Those were the four subjects I use Berkeley Review for. Um, and then I liked Khan Academy. That was the second most one I was using because the videos really helped explain some things. The only problem with Khan Academy is you don't get a lot of practice questions, but you would get that if you use my playlist. Use my playlist. Uh, so you could sub supplement Khan Academy with different questions you find online, but Khan Academy is still a really great way for content review. Uh, then I liked Exam Crackers. So if you guys know Exam Crackers, I liked Exam Crackers general set. They have a general set for biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, and physics. I like that set, but I also use the Exam Cracker 1001 questions, and that's a really great way to get your gears up and running. Excuse me. So that's that was really good. And then I use Kaplan a lot too. I really enjoyed Kaplan's general content. I just thought it was not as challenging as Berkeley Review or Exam Crackers, and it didn't cover the content as holistically enough, but it's still a great resource set. And then I used Princeton Review, um, and still that too was great. I just personally thought I benefited from everything before it a bit more. All right. Um, for me, you know, some people are like, do I need all of them? Um, that's up to you. My motto for anything is always like, if I go into a test, I don't want to have any room for regret. So when I go in, I know I work my butt off. I worked as hard as I could, and this is all I got. And so that's why I did all of these, because I wanted to make sure that when I walked into the test room, I had no chance of giving myself any breathing room. Like if I only did Berkeley Review, and I walked in and I walked out, and I was like, damn, like that was hard. I should have done like exam crackers, and I should have done like Kaplan. I don't like thinking about those situations. I just want to make sure I have no room for regret. And that's why I did all of these. For you, it's really up to you. If you think you only want to do one set, that's totally fine. I've had friends ace it. And they only did one set. So, you know, that's pretty much it. For verbal content, I personally like Princeton Review the best. And then I like Kaplan. I didn't like Berkeley Review as much because their questions weren't as realistic. Uh, that was just my two cents. But again, you guys might differ. Even though these three materials are great, I personally thought Spreeder was a really great way to, again, improve your score rather than just redundantly looking at verbal passages. All right. With that being said, let's just end on a happy note. What makes the, not really happy, but like a cumulative note. What makes the MCAT challenging? There's a large amount of material and you're never going to get through it if you don't have genuine passion for science. you got to love science. Like, how can you not, first of all, love science? Like, it's about your body and you're understanding your body, you're understanding your kidneys, you're understanding your skin cells, you're understanding DNA. Like, you have machines in your body that do things that machines in the real world can't even do. So like it's that part that you should find fascinating. And if you find that fascinating, every part of the MCAT become, becomes fun. All right. And that's how you get around the large amount of material. Because for me, I never even cared about the material. People would be like, aren't you scared there's so much material? I was just like, no, because it's just great to be learning so many things. It's fascinating that you get an opportunity to learn about this. And it's fascinating how far humanity has come to figure all of it out. So try to like embrace that with this mindset. And it's really fun when you do it that way. All right. Second thing why people say the MCAT challenging is you need to vote, devote lots of time. I totally agree. For me, I spent two to three months and every day I was doing at least six hours of just, you know, sitting down hardcore crunching. Um, I would encourage all of you to do the same. Taking a year off to study for the MCAT, unless you've been out of school for like two years, is not exactly, I'd say, necessary. Two to three months is definitely good enough. Um, and then the other thing that makes the MCAT challenging and that I personally still really hate is just the lack of collaboration. Like, guys, like pre meds don't need to compete. Like, can we all just get along? Like, I would love it if we could do that. We can ask each other questions. We can be there for each other. Uh, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Like, on engineers do that all the time and they're so happy. So why can't we do that? It's so frustrating to me. So if you want to be part of that collaborative atmosphere, join my Facebook group. Uh, we're, and then And then you find any hard MCAT questions, post them up. We'll see if we can all help each other out. It's, it's a great way to learn. All right. And last but not least, again, take this entire presentation with a grain of salt. I am not, I am not all knowing 
And um, even though it's a tough test, it's not your enemy. You can overcome it. I promise you're going to do great. And with that, go out there and kill it. Use my Facebook group and use my YouTube videos to prep if that helps you. And if you have any questions for the MK, you want me to make a video about it, again, let me know. And aside from that, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.